Hey guys, Ricky Adamas here again with Two Handed Bowling. And today I want to talk about the slide, briefly. Mainly, the purpose of this video is to inform you of something that I've noticed with the slide that affects my game. And it's something that's such a big issue that it can really determine if my night goes bad or if it goes into terrible, terrible, terrible territory. <laughs> so no no alliteration intended there. But one of the first things that I like to talk about is ball speed when we talk about two-handed bowling because it's a thing that I see first off. Somebody who starts out, they just go up there and they're just kind of like, oh, it's really awkward and, you know, you have to walk around your own feet, right? You have to do that whole tight rope thing. Like, your hands are tied together. So your feet are very awkward. It's hard walking around your own feet. If you haven't done this before, you don't know what I'm talking about, but most of you have. So uh, it's very awkward, and that makes it very difficult to get your ball up to speed. But one of the things that really affects the ball speed in the end, besides where you start, is going to be your slide, right? And the slide is important, and your slide foot, it has to be ready... I mean, not slide foot, but the non-sliding foot. I feel like it's good to have that calf in good shape because it's the one that determines you push off and it determines your momentum at the, in the end. So really, other than timing, which is the timing of when you actually release your ball and actually what you're doing with your wrist and where you're aiming on the lanes and uh, where you're trying to throw the ball, you know, where you're aiming. Other than those things, I think the slide is just as important, if not more important, than those other ones. So, let me explain. With one-handed bowling, right, we have somebody who's going up there, like I said, they're just going up to the foul line, and they got this real controlled walk, and they just release it, right? Well, with a two-handed bowler, you have all this awkward stuff going around, going on, and, you know, when Norm Duke and Rhino Page came to town and we, they did some coaching, there was this one high school kid, and he was just, he is a two-handed bowler as well, as myself, and he would just go up there, and he just did all this jerky stuff or whatever, and he just went up there and did whatever. He got, he's had a 300 before, but sometimes we get 300s from being lucky, right? Some of my 300 was luck, too, and, you know, one of the things that we that we have to concentrate on with the slide is how far back are we starting and where do we intend to end up with the slide. So with the slide, what we have to do, we have to essentially aim to do with the timing also being involved too, and I'll make a video on that here shortly, is planning to end up behind the foul line, right? We don't want to go over the foul line. Everything has to be a carefully coordinated effort with everything put together in the end. And the slide has to be one of the things that's in your mind before you even start. It, it is that important. When I go up there and, and I I've basically I have my hand in position, I, I got the axis tilt that I want, I've, I have you know the wrist in the position, I, I go up there and I stand where I'm going to stand, and I already know what arrow I'm going to aim at, what board I'm going to aim at, whatever, and I know how hard I'm going to throw the ball. After all of that is said and done, you know the main thing that is on my mind before, just before my first foot makes a move, it's the slide. And it's because we want to end up behind the foul line, but we want to have the momentum that we want to have, and that momentum has to drive you in the path of the ball, right? At least for the beginning. I know Jason Belmonte is awesome. He can, he can go above that. But for right now, when we're starting, right, you want to have a little bit of momentum. Because if your arms go this way, but your momentum is that way, is overpowering the slight variation in whether your arm goes back straight or whether it goes back a little bit or whether it goes back that way, 
your momentum is going to influence the ball more than your hand is going to. Your legs are more powerful. They drive your body and the ball as a formed mass, as a unit, they drive the ball more than your weak little arm does, right? And you might, might work out, but I'm not trying to insult you, but your legs are bigger than your arm. Your legs together are bigger than your arm is what I'm trying to say. So when you have your slide in mind, start far back enough to where you're not going to go over the foul line, and then I want you to imagine that the foul line is maybe this far back, right? Maybe like five or six inches back from where the foul line actually is. So that way when you go up there and you have this powerful slide, you end up staying behind the foul line, but you have enough momentum to drive the ball in through the pins and give it the punch that you want it, unless you're trying to throw your ball softly then in that case. Uh, you're trying to pick up a split or whatever, then I suggest go get a 10 pound ball and then throw it real soft and then maybe it'll hit one pin and bounce off the other. But <laughs> this is for the strike ball or for balls where you need a lot of momentum and a lot of drive and a lot of force. Let's see, let's talk about one more thing that's involved with the slide. If this video helped you out or maybe you need a little bit of clarification or you agree with it or maybe you disagree with it, you can help somebody else out here with your experiences. Comment, like, subscribe, and have a great day.